Hey everybody, Chad here. In this video, I have not done a Thailand video for a while. And this video is gonna be a little bit unique because I haven't done a Thailand story from another subscriber, from somebody that's reached out to me uh, per my email, wanting to know my opinion, uh, what's kind of going on. They live in Pattaya, they met a girl, and they kind of had some red flags kind of bounce up and they kind of wanted somebody else's opinion. And since I lived in Thailand for one year, and he saw some of my videos, he reached out to me. Now, of course, we've been chatting back and forth through email a little bit, but I wanted to share share with you kind of a snapshot of his email and his questions. You know, not exposing names, not exposing, you know, anything else, but just a snapshot of kind of what's happening, what's going on, what his concerns are, and I'm, go I'm kind of going to talk about that and answer that kind of how I did in my email, just from personal experience. Uh, like I said, I did live in Thailand for one year, so I do do videos on Thailand, international travel, you know, how to do that kind of stuff, what to look out for, the do's and don'ts, and, you know, and also, you know, the positives along that side also. Sometimes you have negatives and positives no matter where you live. But by the way, I am upstairs in my office. I have my standing desk, so I'm standing up right now. I'm not sitting down, kind of been sitting for the last week or so working. So I felt like standing, so I'm on my iMac, and I have the, his email right in front of me. So if I'm kind of looking down, kind of glancing off camera, you know why, because I'm actually reading. And before we get into this, one of the things, kind of a disclaimer I want to put in there, is when, when I start reading this, and I start answering kind of my personal opinion of what's going on. In no way am I being negative against Thailand. In no way am I I'm being negative with Thai girls. Uh, it's just the culture there. I mean, once we'll get into it a little bit, but there's certain culture there depending upon where you live. If you live in Pattaya, you live in Patong, you live in Wahin, you live in these tourist cities where the, there's a lot of Farang meaning foreigners, okay? And when you when you have these tourist cities, these tourist cities are basically surrounded by the red light districts. They're surrounded by the bars, which that brings in the bar girls, the freelancers, the, the go-go bars, and everything else. So that's really the culture there. I'm, I'm very non-judgmental, okay? And I, I don't have an opinion either way about that type of work. Because once you kind of in Thailand, you live in Thailand, and I lived there for one year, you kind of grow to kind of respect that because, you know, that, that, that is a way they make money. Now, granted, there are scams that come along with that type of work. There are, if you don't want to call it a scam, there are, you know, they take advantage. They take advantage of foreigners because, uh, because lots of times foreigners don't know. So if you're a guy and you could be a woman going to Thailand, you know, listen up. This will be a very interesting story, even though it's short, sweet, to the point. You know, he, he stayed short, sweet, to the point in his email. Once I read it, um, you kind of understand. But there's a lot of stuff that needs to be said with inside this story. So lo and behold, let's get rocking and rolling. And I'm kind of excited about this because I've never, I've never done a, a Thailand story. It's usually just... Usually just Chad's opinion. <laughs> but anyway, uh, let's read it. And I'm going to kind of go right smack to the point. I'm not going to read your whole email. But um, but but let's get going. Where's my glasses? I'm going to put my glasses on. This is what I look like with my reading glasses. I am standing a little bit away from the computer. So I don't want to be like, where? what am I reading here? But anyway, let me read it to you. Then we'll go back and we'll kind of go through it. Okay. He says... I've actually met a girl I like. She's a cute girl giving me a massage in my last video. I asked her for her number and we have been talking at this point. Just, I guess just texting back and forth. She works at the massage place only two minute walk from my condo. And she works like 12 hours a day with a few days off. She said she is from Bangkok and she came to Pattaya one month ago to work at the massage place. She has been working in a jewelry store in Bangkok, but she is divorced for three years and she has a 10 year old son. So she came here to make more money to send her family back in Bangkok. As we have been talking, I told her that if we are a good couple, then she would be able to quit her massage job and I would take care of her. She told me she needs to send her family $300 a month and she also needs money for herself which I believe she was telling me I would have to pay money to pay money to her family and give her money. 
which I don't, I don't mind taking care of her if I like her, but I don't want to fall into any type of scam. Is this common here with the women in Thailand? So that's his question. So he, he kind of give this snippet to me and then he asked me, is this common here in Thailand? So let's go through this kind of a sentence by sentence, because that's like I said, uh, you know, it's a, he did a very, very short two paragraphs, but there's a lot inside this paragraph. Um, you know, there, there's, he's not being very, very specific, but he's just to the point, what's going on, what his kind of minor concerns are. And if this, this is common in Thailand. So this is what I said. I'm not going to read my read the email to you, uh, but I'm just going to an, I'm just going to answer. We're going to go sentence by sentence and answer the questions. Okay. First off, okay, he he met this girl at a massage place and a, a massage shop. Okay, and which I told him like in my email, I'm not judging. Okay, but you have to you. I go. You have to. I said, dude, you have to basically. Where are you? You know, you live in Pattaya. Pattaya is a very tourist town, okay? Tourist town with bar girls, massage girls, and, you know, freelancers, go-go bars, stuff like that. This, this, the sex industry is around that area. When you look at Pattaya, look at Patong, you look at Wai Hin, the sex industry is really all around Thailand. You know, even when you go into the, go into the provinces in Thailand, they, they call them karaoke bars. Okay, like a karaoke bar is pretty much where you have bar girls there, um, you have freelancers there, but but it's a karaoke bar is kind of geared more towards the Thai man. It's not it's not geared towards a parang. It's not geared towards tourists or foreigners. That kind of that that's where Thai men go to drink and have fun and stuff like that. You know when you you know when you're out in Pattaya, when you're out in Patong, you very rarely ever see a Thai man at a bar because they charge, because technically they charge too much for the beer, bottom line. Uh, so a Thai man goes to what's called karaoke bars. That's basically inside the provinces, inside where only Thai, uh, only Thai locals go. So I kind of give you a background here. So I told him, I mean, for, I said for one, you know, she works in a massage shop and it's not judging, uh, but most massage shops are in the sex industry. I mean, m most massage shops, if you pay them extra, will give you a happy, happy ending. I mean, that's just how it is. Um, uh, you know, a lot of them will actually have sex with you, you know, in, inside the massage shop if that's what you want to do. Now, not every massage shop will do this. Now, some of them will have, or will be, you know, a lot of them are legit. They'll give you a massage, but they do other things on top of that as, as well. If you only want a massage, uh, you know, they'll get, you know, that's, you know, they won't, they won't push it, you know, other than that. But, you know, but if you want a happy ending or anything other than that, a lot of massage shops will do that. So most of them will. Now some, you know, I when I lived when I lived in Thailand, I lived in Patong. I stayed at the Adamatra Resort. It was a huge resort in Patong. It's kind of on the border of Patong and Kathu. And um, there was a massage shop like kind of right at the bottom of the hill. And on on that massage shop, it had a sign right in the window like no sex. Okay, and I went in there and I got a few massages before and they never pushed anything. You know, I never really saw anybody getting happy endings or anything from there. But what I did see from there, because I, I stayed at the resort and it was right by the resort, is sometimes when I first came to Thailand, probably the first two, three months, I got up extremely early <laughs> because just of the time difference. When I first came to Thailand, I, dude, I passed out probably by 6 p.m. every single night. So my bedtime was like 6 p.m. So I was so exhausted, but I would wake up at, at 3 a.m. in the morning. And when I would wake up at 3 a.m. in the morning, I would be sitting out on my balcony. I could see the ocean and the balcony was kind of, I could see the road going down. You know, I kind of had a very good spot for my, for my place. The road was kind of going down and it actually went down so you can get out of the resort. You, you, I, you could see the corner of the massage shop. So, you know, when I would go down to my side shop, and then also, this was beside a 7-Eleven, so I always walked down through there when I shopped at 7-Eleven. So anyway, you know, I would recognize some of the girls that worked at the massage shop. They would be up in the resort with a guy because I got up so early, you know, I would see him. I would see them walk out and leave early. And that's what a lot of girls will do. You know, if they spend the night with you or whatever, they'll get up at five in the morning, six in the morning, and they leave before everyone else starts to wake up. So I would, you know, I would recognize them from that massage, massage shop. So they were technically doing freelance. 
So, you know, they're not doing anything in the massage place. You know, they're not giving happy endings, but they are going with guys for freelance. So I told him this, you know, basically in my email. I said, well, you know, if, if she works in a massage shop, you got to really assume that she's at least exposed to it. It doesn't mean she's doing it, but she's exposed to it. You know, that's a 100%, 150%. She's exposed to it. Plus, I've seen a picture of her. She was cute. She was young. So I said, yeah, you got to use common sense here. Like, if she's cute, she's young. It doesn't mean she's doing it, but she's exposed to it. And, you know, she has guys asking her 100%. Either guys are asking her for happy endings because it's very outspoken there. It's not like you're in the United States or Europe or whatever. And, you know, it's illegal there. So you got guys asking or they're asking for a phone number. They're asking to go with her. They're asking, you know, for freelance. So, you know, she, she's going to get, she's going to be exposed to it no matter if she's doing it or not. So that's why I told him. Okay, th th then he says, okay, she works at a massage place. It's a two minute walk to my condo. She works 12 hours a day for a few days off. Now that's probably pretty accurate. You know, they will work from what time, the time the place opens, the time the place closes, just because you got random people coming in all through the day. And that's how they make money. And most of the time, you know, they, they don't get paid hourly lots of times in those types of lines of work. I mean, they get paid by customers. They get paid by doing massages. If they don't give no one a massage, then they don't get paid. So it's kind of like they're working on commission. So that's how it works there in a massage place. Most of the time, they don't get paid like an hourly or daily rate. It's just, you know, you getting paid per customer. This is how, how it works. Some might pay a daily rate, but it's going to be very little then most of it's going to be almost kind of a commission base like we're used to in the United States or Europe or, you know, another country. Then he, then he wrote, she said she is from Bangkok and she came to Pattaya one month ago to work at this massage place. So, so I do believe this. I do believe she came, came from Bangkok. Now, one of the warning signs I kind of told him is that she told him that, well, I came to Pattaya one month ago to work at this massage place. Now, my alarms kind of went off when she said, I came here a month ago <laughs> because I've heard this by many, many Thai women when I lived in Thailand for a year. Now, I lived in Patong. If you're not familiar with Patong, Patong is a party city. So when you go to like Bangalore Road, you go to a bar, you know, I'm very kind of, I don't really see myself as, as, as super outgoing, but I like to talk. I like to, especially when you're in a country, you're learning, you're learning new things, you're learning a new culture. You know, I ask questions. Lots of times I like to go, go inside of provinces where Thai locals live and see how they live. You know, I like to learn as much as possible. So when I would go to bars, you know, that's what I would do. I would talk to the girls. Even if I didn't buy them a drink, I would still talk and be chatty and ask questions. And a lot of them, since they don't know you, and since they're not going with you, you know what I mean? I'm not taking them home. They, they tend to be honest with me, okay? But what I learned was the more girls I talked about, they all said the same things, okay? They all based pretty much would say exactly what, what she was saying inside this email. Or I'm new here. I'm new to Patong, you know? I'm new to Patia. I've only been here a month, okay? And I told, I, I did email them that and I did tell them that, that that's really a concern because they all say the same thing. They all kind of, it's almost like you work in sales and they're working off the same script. <laughs> you know, it's, it's always, I'm new here. You know, I normally don't work in a bar. I normally don't work in a massage place. You know, I normally don't do freelance. Um, I'm only doing it to send money home. And we'll get to that in a little bit. But that was a, a, a little bit alarming because, yes, I believe she's from Bangkok, but I don't believe that she's been in Patsy for only one month. Um, now, he did confirm, and I told him that he did confirm that, well, I know she wasn't there because my condo is right beside the place, and I go get a massage like every other day. So that's the first time I've seen her. Um, so, so then he kind of came back and kind of defended it a little bit. But then I said, well... She might be new at that massage place, okay? She might not be lying technically at that massage place, but she's not new to Patia. Okay, that, that, I said that's just my opinion. Um, she, she's not new. And what a lot of girls will do, they will move around. So, for example, let's say she lives in Bangkok. They'll go down to 
uh, Patong and working Patong for a little bit. And once people start recognizing them, you know, they, they only can play the game for so long before people start recognizing them or praying Taurus starts recognizing them that kind of stay long stay. You know, if you're staying in three months or six months or a year, you start recognizing the girls. So once you, once they start getting recognized, what they do is, is they, they get out of Patong. They go up to Patia. So they move up in Patia and maybe they stay up to Patia for six months. But they do the same the same line of work. They work in a massage place. They're a bar girl. Maybe they just do freelance go go bar. Or they could they could have a normal job, but but they still do basically they still go with guys and do the freelance thing part time type of thing. But they're kind of moving around. You know they they don't stay in one spot because they get too recognized and they can't really play the game like they would so that's why they move around so you're seeing the girls will tell you this they're like oh i'm going up the patio for a little while and i'm saying why and they're they're just be honest they're like well <clears throat> i've been here for a while too many people recognize me like the line of work that i'm in you know what i mean so <clears throat> again when i told him i said well i'm not saying that's what she's doing but that is an alarm sound when they say oh, i've only been here for a month you know they all and, if you if you have experience with this you've you've lived you know in thailand or maybe you visited thailand several times and you've been to patong patia whatever and you'd like to talk to the girls you know what i'm saying is the truth you hear the same story over and over and over by different girls and they all say they're new <laughs> because they don't want you to think they do this for a living that's why they say it so i told i basically told him that <clears throat> then she, then he said then i kind of go on then he said where did I leave off? She said, she is from Bangkok and she came to Patia for one month. Okay, we kind of talked about that. She was working in a jewelry store in Bangkok, but she is divorced for three years and she has a 10-year-old son. And this is a loaded statement. And she came here to make more money, to send money home to her family. Okay, a couple things here. Okay, when she says she's divorced. Okay, now, divorce, I'm going to do this as a stepping stone. There's three points I want to make in this, in this tiny little sentence, he, he, this run-on sentence he sent me, if I want to be like a grammar police. <laughs> but <clears throat> divorce, okay. This is how divorce works in Thailand. Divorce in Thailand is totally different from divorce in the United States, divorce in Europe, divorce in the UK. <laughs> uh, you know, from talking to people about divorce in Thailand, well, I started learning, and, and it was kind of mind-boggling in the beginning, is divorce in Thailand, they don't actually go through an actual divorce, okay? Why? You might be saying, well, why don't they go through an actual divorce? Because they're not legally married, okay? Okay, her ex-husband, he did tell me that her ex-husband is a Thai man, so, or I'm assuming he's a Thai man, is is that Thai, a, a Thai man and a Thai woman, when they get married, it's usually just a ceremony. They're not legally married. Okay, I, I know this, it might be hard to wrap your mind around this, but you know, you research it yourself, you talk, and if you're in Thailand, you talk to people, they are not legally married. That that's uh, That's what was kind of alarming to me a little bit when she said, well, I'm divorced. So I did tell him that, well, divorce is differently in Thailand, okay? Most of the time, Thai people are not legally married. They don't go down to civil and register married, re register their marriage through civil court through Thailand, okay? They just, all they do is do a ceremony, they live together, and they say they're married. So that's pretty much culture. So most of the time, they're not legally married, okay? Now, another thing with divorce in Thailand is that when you have a Thai man and a Thai woman, even if they're boyfriend and girlfriend, they, and you've been boy, boyfriend and girlfriend for a little while, and maybe not even that long, maybe six months or a year, you know, they will start calling you their husband. They will say husband, wife, you know, because that's how it works in Thailand. When you stay together for a certain amount of time, the, it just automatically becomes husband, wife. So they don't really call you culture there. They don't really call you boyfriend, girlfriend. They really call, they really say husband, wife, husband, wife. So when you hear Thai talking like this, you hear husband, wife, you assume they're legally married, but they're really not. And this is one way a scam kind of works 
in you know not just Thailand, the Philippines, and different Asian countries. Because what happens is this is why you kind of hear if you're from the United States, that's why you kind of hear you know how like an Asian woman will have several husbands, and you're scratching your head like how can she get away with this? How can she have several husbands? <laughs> You know what I mean? But this is how they get away with it because they get married. They only do the ceremony and, and they don't register their married. They don't register their marriage legally or civil through civil court in Thailand. So that's how they get away with it. And they do the same things with Farang lots of times. Lots of times a Farang will say he has a Thai wife, but they just went through the, they just went through the, the ceremony. Maybe the Farang paid a dowry. Okay. Basically money to get married. Um, but they don't register it civil. So it's not a legal marriage. It's just, it's just, they're just, they're just basically saying they're married. They're calling each other husband, wife. So I did tell them that I said, no, now she may really be divorced or they at least broke up, but she used the word divorced. Um, but I said, you know, more than likely they're not legally married and she has a 10 year old son. Now, another thing I told them on this is that's very popular in these tourist towns like Pattaya, Patong, Wan Hin, is a lot of girls, a lot of Thai women, okay, will have Thai boyfriends. I've seen it with my own eyeballs. You know, I've had Thai women tell me, okay, I've had Thai women tell me stories. I've seen it with my own eyes. You know, Thai men will, you know, they'll have a motorbike or a motorcycle. They'll go drop off their, they'll go drop off their girlfriend to be a bar girl, to go drop them off at Bangalore Road. They'll go drop them off at a go-go bar. They'll actually go drop them off in resorts because their girlfriend has a customer there. So, you know, they're, 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 the, the, the Thai man at that point knows everything what's going on with their Thai girlfriend. You know, it's a very open relationship. You know, they're kind of basically like this. They're like two peas in a pod. Okay, they don't hide anything from each other. So I, so I did tell him, I go, you have to be aware of that a little bit. You have to be kind of be aware of, she might not really be divorced. Okay. She might, she might still have a Thai man, but she's just telling you that she's divorced because, because what happens is if you give her money, she shares that money with her Thai boyfriend. Okay. And I know that's really hard. It's sometimes if you don't have no experience, it's really baffling. You might sit there and say, no, Chad, you're lying. No, Chad, it's fake news. <laughs> You know what I mean? But you can believe what you want to believe, but that's basically how it works. Not saying what this is what the girl is doing, but that's how it works. Now, another thing he said in this long sentence is that she came to Patia to make more money, which is, pro which is probably true. I do believe her. You know, she's going to make more money in Patia, Batong, then she probably, she would still make good money in Bangkok. Um, but you don't really know the reason why she's leaving Bangkok. You don't know if it's because too many people recognize her and the line of work that she's in. So she has to, she has to kind of move around. She has to kind of jump around. Um, but I do believe that she came, she came to Patsy to make more money, but she's going to make more money in tourist spots than if she's inside the provinces. You know, like if she's living in, you know, what, Udon Thani, Seren, you know, something like that. Okay, then she said, well, I came here to make my money to send home to my family. I do believe that every Thai girl, no matter what industry they're in, every Thai girl sends money home to their family. So I do believe that 100%. I just don't believe the amount she told him that she sends home. That's where it kind of gets a little bit kind of weird a little bit because I didn't, you know, I... Uh, I don't believe that part, but I do believe a hundred percent that she, she does send money home to her family. Okay. Let's, let's kind of move on with the second little paragraph here. And this, this one's a little bit shorter, but then he goes on and he says, as we have been talking, I told her that if we are a good couple, she would be able to quit her massage job and I can take care of her. So I did tell him that, you know, when you start saying that for one, if it's a Thai girl, she, she, she has experience. Okay. This is a hundred percent. She's in Patia. She has experience working around foreigners, working around Farang. So she has that experience. So she already knows, she knows you make more money than she does. Okay. Just because if you come from the States, the dollar purchases, the purchase power is way more higher. So she knows this stuff. 
even though she's playing that she's shy or what, she knows. She has experience. She knows. So I say, you know, kind of keep that kind of on the down, down low. Don't be so kind of eager to kind of throw out and say, I can take care of you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you might like her. You might feel sorry for her. And that's another thing I told him that, you know, you're here. If you're new to Thailand, you're new to the Philippines or whatnot. I mean, that's something that will throw you off because girls and even guys, but girls will play the poor little me. Okay. They'll play that like they're an Academy Award winner actress. So you got to be prepared for that. And you can't let that kind of get swept off your feet and, and think you're going to win them over by giving them, giving, giving them money because you're probably not the only one giving them money. Just, I mean, just saying. So, you know, she, he tells her that, well, if we're a good couple, you know, if we're kind of jive together, then I can take care of you. You can quit your job. Maybe he didn't say move in with him or whatnot, but I'm just assuming, uh, um, but anyway, she told him, okay, so he must've had this conversation because she told him that she sends her family $300 a month. Okay. Now this is where I really told him, like my feelers were kind of really going out. Okay. My, my, uh, kind of my warning was like, oh, I need to warn this guy. Um, now, like I said before, I do hundred percent believe that she sends money to, to her family. Okay. That's Thai culture. Thai culture is they take care of their parents they take care of their family. So when their parents get older, lots of times in Thailand, unless they're well off, okay, if they're not in Thailand, they don't have anything like a retirement plan or a pension. They don't have like in the United States, they have social security. They don't have none of that. So it's really up to the children, okay, the kids that when their parents are in their retirement years, elderly, that they take care of them. They send them money every month. Okay, that's 100%. That's, you know, that's part of culture. And that might be different from your culture, might be different from the United States. But in Thailand, they do take care of their parents. Every girl does. It doesn't matter what she does for a living. She does take care of, take care of her parents and her family. And she does send money. Now, where I disagree is, is how much money does she really send? So let me give you an example. She, she told him $300. $300 in Thai and Thai bot, that's the money, is, is around 15,000 baht. Now, 15,000 baht is actually pretty decent money in Thailand, okay? $300 here in the States, okay, if you, you wanted to try to live on $300, you know, you, it's, I, dude, it's impossible to live on $300 in the United States. But in Thailand, $300 is 15,000 baht, relatively, you know, kind of, really, I'm going off the top of my head, you know, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing a calculation here. So don't hold me to that. Like, well, no, Chad, it's actually 14,000 and blah, 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 blah. No, it's around 15,000. It could be more depending upon what the bot to the dollar ratio is. But since he's coming from the United States, you know, that's relatively what I would say it is. But 15,000, okay, a normal Thai person that works in resorts and stuff like that, if they make, even if they do hair, like my girlfriend, she does hair and stuff like that. You know, they only make around 10,000 to 15,000 baht per month. That's not per week, that's per month. So a Thai local, like when they live in Thailand, they might pay 5,000 baht for a room, another 5,000 baht, 6,000 baht for food for the whole month. Then they can save, you know, three or 4,000 baht. Okay, just to kind of give you some, some real numbers here. And those are actually real numbers. Okay, this is, you know, that's actually what a Thai would actually pay, a Thai local. So when he told me $300, I was like, dude, there's no way. She told him, she, he, she, she told him that she sends 15,000 baht to her family. Dude, I told him, I said, no way she sends that much. You know, she told you that number because, because if you give her that money, you know, yes, she's sending a small portion to her family, but she's keeping, she's keeping it for herself. And that's what she's doing, 100%. And this comes from just personal experience. And this comes from me talking to girls in Patong when I lived in Patong. Now, every girl I talk to, they send money home. But this is the average that I get from, from girls. Now, this is coming from their own mouth. Okay, not me making it up. Okay, most Thai girls send home 
$3,000 to $5,000 to their family per month. Okay, so they only send home in between $3,000 and $5,000 to their family per month. That's how much they send home. Now, if he's giving her $15,000 bot, she'll probably, more likely, this is what she'll probably do. And I'm assuming, of course, but what she'll do is she'll probably send $5,000 home to her family. Then the other $10,000 bot, she'll keep for herself, blow it, spend it, go out and drink, buy stuff. You know, that that's what she's doing. So, you know, I'm not going to believe that much money is being sent to, to her family. Uh, there's no way I'm going to believe that. And, you know, I, I told him on this, I told him that, you know what, if you want to give her money, if it does transpire where you want to give her some money, I would negotiate with her. I'll go, yes, I do believe she sends money home to her family, but I would just be honest and say, hey, look, you know, I you know I have a friend, He's he's lived here before, he has more experience than me, and, you know, he says you probably only send home 4,000, 5,000 baht. So I'm willing, willing to give you four to 5,000 baht. You don't have to give my example, but just say, okay, I'll give you 5,000 baht to send home to your family and see what she says. You know, test the waters a little bit. You know what I mean? If, if she wants to back out and she wants to say, no, 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 you know, then maybe she's playing with you. Okay. Take the warning signs as warning signs. Okay. But I don't believe she sends home 15,000 baht to her family. I've not met one girl in Thailand. I've been there the whole time. Me talking to that sends home that much money. None of them. And it's not even close. <laughs> the highest I've, I've seen is 5,000. Most of the time they send home 1,000 baht per week. So every week they send home 1,000 baht. It doesn't matter how much money they're making. They send home 1,000 baht. So I told him, I don't believe it whatsoever. Okay. And then she, then he said, then he said, now he's assuming on this. Then he says, which I believe she was telling me I would have to pay. I would have to pay money. I would have to give her the $300 to give to her family. And I would probably have to give her money to stay with me. So he's given her two sources of money, one for her family and one for herself to stay with him. So I did warn him on, warn him on that because I said, you know, well, what happens is it really becomes a transactional relationship. And what I mean by a transactional relationship is that you're pretty much paying her to be with you. And at this time, I, I really don't know the age gap. Uh, I, you know, I, I seen a picture of the guy and, you know, he, he looks good for his age, but I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure if he's retirement age. I'm not too sure he, he's around my age or not. I'm not retirement age in Thailand. So, so I'm not really too sure what type of age gap there is. I did see a picture of her. So, you know, I'm assuming there might be a 20 year age gap. He never told me that, but I'm just assuming for kind of basically what I, you know, just from pictures and just, you know, being able to look and tell. Um, so if there's that big of an age gap, I said, you really have to take things really, really slow, especially when you start talking about money especially giving them money. You know what I mean? But this is how I look at it is that if they're staying with you and they're living with you and they're, they're not renting their own place, they're with you. Well, when they're living with you, you're paying for everything anyway. Okay. So why would you be giving her money on top of you already paying for everything? It makes no sense. It makes no sense being a guy. It makes no sense being, being an alpha guy. You know what I mean? So that's what you got to kind of... You know kind of understand it a little bit is that you know it's it's kind of how she's talking and 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 saying things to you it's like it's really kind of a transactional relationship in my opinion and girls have Thai girls they have an extraordinary what I want to say they have they have so much experience in, in, <laughs> in what they're doing they've been doing since they were little on up okay uh, you, if you go to you go inside these providences, s some of the some of the girls don't even finish high school. You know, they they, they work since they're 13, 14 years old. They, they either work on the farm. Then once they get a little bit older, sometimes you see and even on Bangalore Road, you see five year olds, six year olds running around selling flowers and selling little like th the necklaces that go around you. And, and they're cute and stuff like that to buy things, help them out, stuff like that. But but they have extraordinary, they have years and years of experience over you in this, in, in this field, okay? On top of it, they're used to talking to Frank. They're used to talking to foreigners. They know what foreigners want. They, they you know, they, they, they're masters at, 
that telling you what you want to hear. So I, I just told him that you, you have to be kind of beware. If you like her, that's great. Okay. But take things really slow and, and take the warning signs, you know, you know, kind of what's really going on. Don't kind of fall head over heels for her because, you know, you, you, you kind of get, you basically get in too deep that you can't get out. And that's kind of, the, I hear a story after story about when I lived in Thailand about, you know, a foreigner that comes there, they have a Thai girlfriend, the Thai Thai girlfriend pretty much takes everything from him, you know, the short story of it. And then either he has to go back to his country to recoup or, or, you know, or basically move on or go back to work or to try to recoup everything that he lost. So I go, they do have a lot of experience. They do know what they're doing. And so that's basically the gist of my email uh, to him. Now he did reply. I want to read to you his reply. Uh, just to kind of uh, see where it is here. And it's kind of short, sweet, to the point uh, as the other one. And he, he says, Chad, thanks for the advice. I would be more careful and I will take it slow. Because I basically told him what I'm telling you. You know, take it slow. If you like her, take it slow. Don't be jumping into anything super, super quick. Take it slow. But if you take it slow, you can test him a little bit. You know, if things just don't seem right, then you can basically get out. You can tell her, hey, this isn't for me, you know, whatever. Whatever, no matter how honest you want to be with her, you know, you can get out of it. But, but this is what he says. He starts kind of defending himself a little bit. He's professional about it, but he starts kind of defending her a little bit because when I sent that email, you know, I gave him a lot of information. And he says, I do know that this massage shop is next to my condo and it is legit. Okay, I see multiple times every day. I never seen any of the women leave with a man. Also, I know she did. Also, I know she did not work there until about one month ago because I have been going to this place for a while, as it's the closest one to me. I did ask her about other guys that try to come in, and the, he's, he kind of worded it really weird. I can't read it. I apologize. He said I did ask her about. If guys try to come come on to her when she gives gives them an oil massage, and she said no, it hasn't happened to her, but it has happened to other women there. And this kind of this kind of one kind of stuck out to me because I said I did reply to this email and I said, you know, I said no, thanks for getting back to me, but you know I pulled out certain things that she told him again. And she kind of it, she kind of plays that the same game when you talk to a lot of Thai women. You know, you, you, you go out and drink for a beer, like my last example. You know, I, I talk to a lot of people. I like talking to a lot of people. I like learning about other cultures. You know, that's one of the one of the reasons why I like to travel, um, is I like learning about other cultures. So, but I said, what stuck out to me here is like, I told him, like, I, she's 100% lying, okay? When she says that, that, you know, she's working in a massage place, no guy has asked her to go to freelance. No guy has asked her to do a happy ending no guys asked or anything okay but then but then this is what she says but other girls that work here happen to them <laughs> you know what i mean so she's kind of playing goody two shoes and i, I told him straight up i said 100 percent, she's lying i go i said i saw a picture of her when she was in your one of your videos you know she's young she's cute she's sexy so i go 100 percent, she's gonna have a guy that ask her those things. She's gonna have a guy ask her for a num for, for a phone number. Ask her, hey, come over to my place. You know, it's it's you know, Thailand is a different can of worms than it is in the United States. Even if you have guys in the United States, when they go to Thailand, they might not be aggressive in the states, but when they go to Thailand, they basically act like there are no laws. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you see all types of stuff when when you're on Bangalore Road. You know, from guys from the United States. Okay. Some of the stuff they do in Thailand, they would be thrown in jail here. So he, that's just kind of like like a side point here. But but here I told him I do I don't believe this at all. You know I you know she's cute she's sexy you know she's young you know and you know she's gonna have a guy ask her hey do you do this and then she's either gonna say yes or no hey you know do, after work do you want to meet me here she's either gonna say yes or no. So I said, you know, I don't believe that nobody has asked her, but they ask all the girls around her except her. 
You know what I mean? And that's really a game a lot of, a lot of the girls will play. You know, you, you hear it from almost every single girl. Oh, you know, all the girls over here do this, but I don't do it. You know what I mean? So, you know, I said, I don't believe that at all. You know, she, she could at least be honest. If she really wants you to believe her, she could at least be honest and say, hey, you know, yeah, guys ask me, but I always decline. But she, she basically really wanted to play like, oh, no, they ask everybody else around me that works here, but not me. But I don't believe that at all. I, I told him, I said, like, dude, I know 100% she's lying about that. I know she, people's guys going to ask her because that's that's the field, the field that she's in. Plus, she's in Patia. So she's going to have have guys to ask her. But anyway, he goes on and, and he says, says that, you know, she said no guys has asked her. They've asked other other women there. And she said, well, the massage place has a strict no sex policy. And some massage places do. OK, they do have a, a sex policy, no sex policy. Uh, now, no sex policy could mean actually no sex, but it doesn't really mean happy ending. Um, so you kind of play with the words there, but I have seen girls go with guys after work. Okay. They might not do it there, but they leave with, when they get off work, they go with a guy. Um, lots of times, uh, I'm not saying her, but lots of times it does happen. It still happens. Then, then he says she, she has also showed me pictures of her at her old job doing jewelry. So I do believe most of what she is saying, but as far as no guys trying anything, who knows? Okay. So I did tell him, I did comment on that. I did say, well, no, she is, you know, she, she, they are going to tell you truth. Okay. That not everything's not always going to be a, an outlandish lie. Okay. Now I'm going to believe, okay, her family's in Bangkok. She worked in Bangkok. Um, you know, here's pictures of me working in a jewelry store. You know, I do believe that. They will do that. They will show you real stuff. They will have real stories, okay? And it's real. It's the truth. But what happens is they start mixing little lies into the truth. So I told him, like, you know, you kind of, that's why I tell you, you have to take it slow, okay? That way you, you don't jump into it like you're doing a cannonball <laughs> in, in a swimming pool, okay? You take it slow. So you can kind of make sure she's really being honest with you over time. Then he goes on and he says, but she is also very shy, unlike the wild Thai women who look, who look at you like a piece of meat. And she shows me pictures of her family back in Bangkok. So I want to believe she's not a freelancer. It, it, it just doesn't fit what I, have, what I have seen from her. Okay, now, you know, now he, he doesn't really want to believe that, you know, she, you know, she goes with guys she does freelance, even though she's young, she's cute, she's sexy. She works at a massage shop. She works at a massage shop in Patia, you know, a very, very party city where tourists, you know, Patia and Patong are probably the most two popular places to go in Thailand. You got Wan Hin and other places, but as far as party cities, those are probably the most two popular places to go. And now all of a sudden he wants to say, well, I just don't want to believe it, but she, she's shy. She acts shy. Um, you know, when I, when I go down to the walking streets in Patia, a, you know, other girls are aggressive. They look at me like, Oh, come here. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you gonna and I told him, you're going to have different personalities. Yes. You're going to have girls that, yes, they're a bar girl. Yes. They do freelance and they're cool with it. Okay. They tell you straight up. That's what they do. They're not hiding anything. And you have other girls they do the same thing, but they play a better game at it. They play the game as they're a normal girl, okay? They have a normal life. Um, they don't do that kind of stuff, and that's the game that they play. So, so I told him, like, you know, again, take it slow because you don't know. Just, just to basically say, oh, no, she doesn't do that. I mean, for being young and cute, okay, in Patia, Okay, she has experience. She has experience being around foreign foreigners, and you know it's it's also kind of for her defense. It's also a very exciting time. Okay, like I I lived in Patong for one year, and when you live in a tourist town, okay, even as a tourist myself, when you live in a tourist town, it's kind of it has a it has a very unique energy around it because 
you know, it's not like living in, in, you know, in the United States or it's not like living in a small town or even in a big city. When you live in a tourist town, what's kind of cool about it is because there's, there's a different type of energy because you're surrounded by people who are, of course, you're surrounded by Thai locals. You're, you're surrounded by Thai that work there. But you're also surrounded by people that constantly come in, okay, foreigners that constantly come in all over the world, okay, which is cool. They come in all over the world. They're on vacation. <laughs> they want to be there. They're happy. They're enjoying life because they're on vacation. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? And they're, they're there just to have fun, okay? They're getting away from their own life back in the United States and Europe, UK, India, or wherever they're coming from, okay? So... That's what I mean by it's 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 a different energy. It's a different energy feel even when you live there as an expat or you live there as a foreigner or you're there doing a short stay, you know, three months, six months or a year. So that type of energy kind of rubs off on you because people aren't really beat up by life. I mean, unless a guy lives there for a long, long time, he's been taken advantage of or whatever, that he might be beat up by life. But for the most part, when you're around these tourist cities, these tourist towns, this is a way different type of energy. And for Thai women, you know, Thai women, for their defense, you know, even for me, if I was a woman, <laughs> you know, it's it's very attracting to a woman, even a Thai woman, that they're in these tourist towns, okay? They're away from their normal life, okay? From, you know, living in Udon Thani and Seren and these pop provinces or these poor villages. And... They go to Pachi, they go to Patong, they go to Wahin, they go to other areas, and they're surrounded by guys. You know, some of them are ugly guys, some of them are good looking guys, some of them are fat guys, some of them are in shape, you know, all over. And they're there just to have a good time. They're there just to want to have fun. They're not beat up by life. You know, on top of it, you know, they have a budget. You know, they have a budget for their for their vacation. They're there just to have a good time, spend money. If, you know, the, if a foreign foreigner likes you, hey, come over, uh, come come with me. I'm going on this little boat ride all day long. Go up and the girl comes with you, you pay for. Okay, some of these places, you know, it, you pay for two people anyway, even if you're flipping single. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? So for a girl, it, it, it can be an, a very exciting time because you know, you know, they're away from their kind of regular life. Then they're around foreigners that the foreigners are away from their regular life and they're just having fun. So it's a very tempting, you know, that's why it's a very tempting industry. It's a very tempting industry for a woman to be a bar girl or for a woman to do freelance or for a woman to be a go-go bar. But it's, it, it can be a very fun industry because you're constantly hanging around with, around with people that they're just there having fun point blank. Now there's our negatives with that, but you know, we can pull out the negatives, but they're just there having a good time. Okay. And this is why I got, this is why I got to say with girls that do freelance. Okay. Now, if you don't know what a freelancer is, I've been using that term for this whole video. Uh, sorry about that. If you don't know what a freelancer is, freelancer, uh, is somebody that you pay them to have sex. That's a, that's a freelancer. Now, from my experience, and I've seen tons of freelancers. You go, you walk down Bangalore Road, you go to a bar. There are bar girls, there's freelancers. Even a bar girl does freelance. They go with you. But a bar girl is different. You usually have to pay, they call it like a bar fine. If you want to take a girl outside the bar, you have to pay a bar fine. Basically, you have to pay the bar for, for her to leave because, you know, you're basically, the bar is losing money if she just goes with you. Okay. So, you know, bar girls will leave with you if you pay a bar fine. And that's if they only want to. And this is what I notice with girls there that do freelance. They only go with you if they want to go with you. Bottom line, they only go with you if, if they find you good looking and you're fun, they might go with you. Okay, it's just like a normal girl. If you're good looking and you're fun, they want to get to know you, they'll go with you. Yes, you might pay, but they'll go with you. Okay, now if they don't want to go with you, they are either say no, or they're busy, just like any other girl, or, or if they think you don't have the money, they crank up the price. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because they think you're not going to pay. So they, they'll give you a really high price. They'll say, oh, 10,000 baht. And you'll be like, okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Because they really don't want to go with you. Okay, now some do, but most don't. So when, when you have a girl that does freelance or you catch her doing freelance, maybe you're going out with her, your boyfriend, girlfriend, you catch her doing freelance, 
you know, she's doing it because she wants to do it. She's going with guys that she wants to go with. Now, I know that's hard to f finagle in your, in your brain. You watch too many movie, movies on it, you know what I mean? But most of these girls go with guys they want to go with. Now, there are some occasions where, you know, you have a really old guy. He knows that no girl's going to go with him. <laughs> you know, bottom line, to kind of where he looks. You know, he might be 65, extremely out of shape. You know, he never took care of himself. And then, you know, he, you know, if he's going to pay a freelancer, well, he's, he's probably going to pay her 5,000 baht, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000 baht for a night. You know what I mean? So, and you have girls that will take that because he's paying so much, so much money. If she really wants to go with you, sometimes they don't charge you. If she really wants to go with you, it might only be 1,500 baht. You know what I mean? But she wants to make some sort of money, but she's having fun and she kind of still really wants to be with you. You know, even though it's kind of hard for your mind to kind of wrap around it. But but that's kind of on their defense. And I just wanted to say that, you know, when I, you know, I lived there so long, I am going back to Thailand and, um, you know, in probably in the next three, four months. So, you know, for their defense, you know, that's, you know, it's a lifestyle there. It's, you know, that's what, you know, that's what goes on there. And that's a way of life there. So, so anyway, get back to this email. It's almost done. Um. So he basically kind of is defending her through this email that, you know, she showed him pictures of her family back in Bangkok. He doesn't want to believe that she's a freelancer. She just doesn't fit the profile because he's thinking like, oh, he's judging from what he's seen on the walking streets in Pattaya. You know, a girl's being more aggressive. And I told him, well, you still want to take it slow. Okay. I'm not saying she is, you know, I feel like you know, there's a couple lies she really told that really is alarming to me, but just take it slow. I mean, that's really the best thing. And I kind of reminded him, like, why did you go to Thailand? You no, know, you went to Thailand to see the country. You went to Thailand to see the world, you know, and you don't want to get mixed up in stuff where, you know, you're in too deep money-wise, paying someone money before you, you get out of it. You know, and, I, and I've heard so many stories where guys do that. They get in way too deep. And by the time they back out, by the time they realize they're in this great big scam, you know, they've paid thousands of dollars, <laughs> thousands of dollars and you know, either wipe through their retirement or, or what. And it does really happen. So some, some of these stories, people will have stories and it really happens to them. And they kind of want to warn other guys or warn other people that it does happen. People, I mean, guys have lost everything in Thailand when they when they actually came to Thailand pretty well off and they could live the rest of their life there to, to lose everything. So that's why some of these stories are very powerful. Um, but anyway, he kind of goes on. He says, well, I haven't gave her any money. No, I haven't given her any money for anything except for like a 200 baht tip, uh, you know, when he gets a massage. And, and then, then he just says, you know, we'll see what happens. Now, I'm looking for signs of anything resembling a scam, but I've not seen anything yet except for when she told me she sends $300 a month to her family. So even when she told him $300 a month, even for him, you know, just logically thinking how cheap it is in Thailand, that she, he didn't really believe it. He didn't really believe that she was sending that much, that she was sending 15,000 baht to her family. And when I told him, like, well, I thought about that and that kind of strengthened that, like, even though she, you know, it did kind of send off little, the little bells in his head. Um, but he, but, but, but he says, but she hasn't asked me, she really hasn't asked me for any money yet. So I'm assuming he hasn't went with her. She hasn't came over or, you know, she's taking it slow too. You just don't know. So basically, you know, I, I answered that and I, and I told him a couple things I told you here, but I said, you know, really just take it slow. Okay. We all, and I said, you're a lot like me Now I'm very positive. I want to look best in every situation. And, but you really just want to take it slow, especially when you're in Thailand, especially when you're a Thai woman, even when you're in the Philippines. Uh, my ex was Filipina, so I have a lot of experience in the Philippines. Been there several times. Used to own a condo in the Philippines. So, uh, you know, it's the same thing. You want to take it slow. You want to take it slower than you would naturally would uh, just because, you know, just because there are a lot of scams or there are, if you don't look at it as a scam, you just want to look at it as, well, she's just taking advantage of them because he doesn't know, he doesn't know culture there. Um, uh, so no matter how you look at it, you, someone's being taken advantage of for it's a scam, you know, it's just, that's just terminology. Uh, but anyway, that's what he said. Hopefully that helped. I don't even know how long I was talking. 
Uh, I had to take a break here and came back. But uh, then my standing desk is a different energy. Sometimes I just sit down and talk, but then I thought, well, it's easier for me to read rather than reading off my phone and the camera and stuff like that. But hopefully this helped. And, and you know, I've, we've been kind of chatting back and forth, you know, the guy and me and stuff like that. So I'll, when I go back to Thailand, I'm probably, I lived in Phuket and I lived in Patong for one year. And now I'm not going to be in Phuket. I stayed there in Phuket so long. I actually wanted to move around Thailand, but I went there during the sandbox program. Uh, once Thailand, Thailand was the first country that opened up after the, after 2020 happened. So I have to be careful what I say here. Uh, so after what, after 2020, Thailand is the first country that opened up in 2021. So that was the only country that you were allowed to travel to. So that, that's how I ended up in Thailand. So when I came to Phuket, you couldn't really leave Phuket. Okay. Most of Thailand was still shut down. Okay, most of Phuket was still shut down when I got there. You weren't even allowed to buy beer in the bars. <laughs> it was funny. They served beer and basically coffee mugs and stuff like that. It was kind of kind of comical a little bit. But anyway, that's why I didn't really move around Thailand. I didn't really leave Phuket because, because I was told by the Thai locals that, dude, if you leave Phuket, you go to Bangkok, other areas, they're dead. You know, nothing, nothing's 100% opened yet. So that's why I basically just hung back in Patong, hung back in Phuket, went around all Phuket, you know, lived in Patong. And when I, when I basically came back here to Ohio, came back here to the United States, that's when, that's when basically Phuket or Thailand was kind of really 100% open and things were kind of basically going back to normal. Uh, but anyway, you know, th I just want to share that. Hopefully that helps. Uh, and, and, you know, if you made it this far into the video, you know, in no way this this is me looking negative on Thailand. I love Thailand. No way I'm, you know, looking negative on Thai women. It's just, it's a different country. Okay. And every country has its own little things they do if you're a tourist in that country. Every country does. And trust me. Um, you know, when I lived in LA, you know, people come visit LA. There's scams in LA or different places take advantage of you if you are a tourist. So every country has things that goes on. Um, so look at it like that. But no way I'm doing doing this as a negative. But if you're interested in international travel, especially Thailand, these are little things that kind of happen on the guy side of things. And it does happen on the woman's side. So the same type of scams happen on the woman's side, not just the guy. So, but anyway, hopefully that helped. And I'll see you in the next video.